And if you guys are sitting back there thinking, like, uh -uh, you know, you're gonna come back and bite you in the butt. Well, it did. <laughs> Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 51 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, though I do get up to other creative content from time to time. I'm coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small suburb outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, in the Southwest United States. This is where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three-year-old son, Ronan, our six-year-old son, Angus, and our big fat outdoor cat, Oscar. If you would like to reach out and get in touch, you can email me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com or you can find me on Instagram at Taylor Seeking Cozy. I'm also the owner and the hand dyer behind Fiber for the People Yarn and if you would like to learn more about Fiber for the People Yarn and see all of that beautiful yarny goodness you can do that by heading over to Instagram at fiber.for.the.people that is the home of all things Fiber for the People in terms of social media. You can also learn more about Fiber for the People and dive deeper down that rabbit hole by heading over to the shop site which is fiberforthepeople.com. I I definitely encourage anyone interested in Fiber for the People to sign up for the newsletter. I keep you in the loop of all things Fiber for the People as well as shop updates and any promotions that are going on via the newsletter. So definitely head over to the shop site, scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can sign up for the newsletter there. And a really great way to just stay in the loop is to head over to Instagram and follow at fiber.for.the.people. Everything about Fiber for the People is shared there as well. The next shop update is Saturday, September 4th at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. But if you would like to purchase Fiber for the People yarn in between that you can do so by looking into the sweater quantity option that I offer and all of my signature solids are available on a die to order basis at any time in the shop head over to the shop read more learn more and dive down that fiber for the people rabbit hole thank you so much for stopping by to check out episode 51 of the podcast I am so thankful that you are here to share this with me I have a lot to share with you guys today including saying goodbye to a current whip that you have probably seen before if you've been watching the podcast and saying hello to a current whip that I've let languish for quite some time and I really need to get off the needles. But before we do that, let's get up to date with the Wool Needles Hands Year of Knits Make Along 2021. We have a Ravelry account associated with the podcast. You can find that by heading over to Ravelry, searching in the groups tab, Wool Needles Hands, a knitting podcast. You'll find us there. You can join and get involved in the year long knit along that we have going on. It is a very flexible, easy knit along or make along, I should say, where we are creating things throughout the year with fiber, whether that be knitting, crochet, macrame, weaving, what have you. Head over to the Ravelry group. You can learn all about it over there. Should you decide to join into the make along, you can submit all of your project photos into the chatter thread so that I have photos to choose from when I add them here to the podcast make along gallery, if you will, which is what I'm going to share with you guys right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the most recent makes coming out of the wool needles hands year of knits make along 2021. <music> Always lovely stuff to see that you guys are submitting over there into the chatter thread. I get so inspired every time I see new projects that folks are creating and these are no exception. I do want to do another giveaway for the make along. So on the next episode of the podcast, I will be doing a random selection of the finished objects in the finished object thread to give away a prize. And the prize that I'll be giving away on the next episode of the podcast is this collection of progress keepers and slash stitch markers from market. 
This is an Etsy shop and a gorgeous Instagram account. You can find the Instagram account at the underscore market. And then the Etsy shop is the market shop.etsy.com. She makes beautiful project bags, really adorable progress keepers. And then in addition to those, there's these little stitch markers right here. So this is going to be given away on the next episode of the podcast. Ugh, they're so adorable. So like bohemian and just... I don't know, like little statement pieces for your knitting. So these are going to be given away on the next episode of the podcast. So if you have not joined the make along, definitely do it now so that you have a chance to be drawn randomly to win this adorable collection of progress keepers and stitch markers. <music> Okay, it has been a while since we've done a slippers and sippers segment of the podcast, and I regret to inform you that today is just going to be a sippers segment of the podcast. I am not wearing any slippers. I'm actually wearing nothing on my feet right now. It is a muggy, smoky, warm day outside here in the Southwest United States in near Las Vegas, Nevada. We have a lot of smoke in the air from the California fires. Anybody who is being directly impacted by that, I my heart goes out to you guys. It is crazy what is going on over there, but that smoke has gravitated this way. And, um, it's very, it's very pesky, especially if you suffer from environmental allergies like I do and my children do. Um, so it's just, and then also it's humid and all of that. So socks just weren't, you know, in the, uh, they weren't in the, in the stars for today. But one thing I am doing, the sacrifices I am making is I am having a nice hot, cup of chamomile tea and that is okay because I always can go for a really good cup uh, or mug I should say of chamomile tea and I really wanted to share this particular one with you guys if you um, are following the Taylor Seeking Cozy Instagram account I just shared this the other day and this is by two leaves and a bud and their Instagram um, as two leaves tea and I picked this up at Whole Foods the other day because I loved the look of the little tea sachets. Um, the, it's whole flower tea. So I'm using a clear mug because I wanted you to see if you can see. So I'm going to put this up here and maybe you can see the tea bag and you can see the whole chamomile flowers that are in the tea bag. I'm trying to turn it around and I'm having, no, I could turn the mug around, I guess. Let's like twist the string, whatever. Oh gosh. And now the thing went inside the little tag. Ugh. Okay. Anyway. Well, anyway, it's lovely tea and I love that it has the whole flowers in there. It has a very, I don't even know if you can say this, especially about chamomile tea, but it's got a very full body, well-rounded flavor to it. I mix it with some honey and it's just, it's perfect for me. So that's what I'm having in my mug today. And I want to share with you guys, we're going to get to the knitting in a second. So just, you know, if you're impatient and you're here just for the knitting, go ahead and just scroll right to this time stamp right here. And time stamps are included down in the description box. So, you know, don't, don't get, um, don't get your, don't, um, just be patient. Anyway, I want to share with you guys some really cool things that have happened for me. Um, recently. So if you've been around for a while, so we go back to 2017. That's, that's how far this podcast goes back. That's how far fiber for the people. That's how far fiber for the people goes back. The podcast is um, older than the, the yarn business. But if you've been with me for a while, you know that um, for as long as you've known me, I've had children or a child. So my oldest is six and a half. My youngest is almost three and a half. Now, when I started the podcast, obviously my youngest was not born yet. Um, I was a full-time stay-at-home mom and I was running a yarn business or starting a yarn business at that time, trying to build a business. And um, I, my son was home with me all the time. And then Ronan, we discovered Ronan was coming and then Ronan was home with me and I was still working on building up this yarn business. Um, and we never did daycare. We never did anything like that. So I was really doing the full-time stay at home mom gig while also trying to build this business. You get the picture. Well, last, um, at the end of last school year, we decided that when Angus, my oldest, started first grade, that we were going to put Ronan into a three-year-old preschool program um, that's just right down the street from our house. It's this great preschool, and we really wanted to be involved with it, and we knew that it would just be a perfect place for him because he's so ready for a school environment, especially after seeing his older brother be really excited about school. 
And because Angus is at school this year, full, you know, um, at school, it's kind of cool that they can experience that together. So long story short, or long, we decided to enroll him in this three-year-old preschool program. And starting this school year, which started really early for us, it's early August when school starts, he started going to school. He goes every day. So Angus is in first grade, so he's going every day, full day. But Ronan is also going every day, half day. So from eight to 12, um, I have no children. I'm Right now, we are in my home and I am alone. And I can't even begin to tell you what that is like. I've never experienced that. The only time my kids have ever been away to afford me some kind of work time is when maybe my parents have taken them. And it's always a favor. You kind of feel like you're uh, imposing in some way, even though my parents would never have me feel that way. It always kind of feels like that. But right now, I mean, Angus is in first grade, so he's at school learning, very productive. Ronan, this preschool program is amazing. It looks just like mini kindergarten, very productive. And he's very engaged. He comes home happy. And it's, I can't even, I can't even tell you. So I have just, um, last week was my first full week doing this. And I felt like I went through this period of what do I do with all of this time? I mean, I know how to fill this time. I've got plenty to do, but it's, it's kind of a very surreal experience because typically I would have to wait till the end of the day to get my work done when my husband got home because a lot of the work that I do just cannot be done um, with my children at home because I have to be out in my studio with a mask on. It's very hard for me to be available, whatever, in case my children need me. Um, so I would have to wait until my husband got home from work. And at that time, it's 2.30, almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm beat, but you, you just make do. I've been doing it for the last however many years. And so this is just a whole new world for me. So I am sorry if that is just a lot of blather in the beginning of the podcast episode, but I wanted to share that with you because it has opened my world up. So if you've wondered over the summer, well, where did Taylor go? Where did the podcast go? Taylor has not gone anywhere. It's just that we had a lot of traveling to do. We had a, um, a funeral slash uh, spreading of the ashes ceremony for my uncle that unexpectedly passed away in February. Um, lots of things going on this summer. So I just, I had to set it down and know that, okay, my world will be opening up for me come fall um, or, you know, early August, and I'll really be able to devote consistent time to filming. So anyway, that's my story. I really wanted to share that with you guys, because for those of you that have been around for a long time, you know um, my situation with my children and being a, you know, a business owner and running this fiber business and also being home with them. So I don't know, wanted to share that with you. Thank you for listening. If you stuck around and didn't actually skip ahead, but if you did, that's fine. No big deal. You're not here to hear me tell you that anyway, but let's go ahead and get started. I do have some knitting content to share with you guys today. Um, and some of that is in regards to a project that we are going to be saying bye-bye to. Um, but let's go ahead and get on with it. <laughs> Okay, I have nothing in my hands yet because there's something over here in the corner of the room that Gladys, how do I, there, Gladys is wearing right here. Um, I'm not going to pull it off of the mannequin. I've shared this sweater in very recent, the most recent episode of the podcast I shared this sweater. This is the um, Chloe sweater by Katrin Hannibal, and it is a beautiful um, kind of variegated stripe sweater. I, the thickness of the stripes are all different. Okay. That's what that is over there. If you want to know more about that sweater and hear me chat about that, definitely watch the previous episode of the podcast, but it is over there, um, on Gladys because it is going to be ripped back. Um, it's going to be ripped out completely. Now I don't have a very strong relationship with swatching. I don't like to swatch. And if I can get away with it, I just will sometimes knit up what would be an embarrassingly small swatch to just make sure like generally where I might be. And if you guys are sitting back there thinking, like, uh -uh, you know, that you're going to come back and bite you in the butt. Well, it did because that sweater is beautiful as it is. It is just too big. And actually it's one of two sweaters that I have right now that are too big. Um, the other one I'll share with you later on down the road. Maybe, maybe I won't because that's going to be ripped out too, but it is, it's too big. I'm tempted, you know, I'm tempted to just get up and show you what we what I'm talking about here. So I'm just gonna pull it off. Okay, here we are. 
All right, so here it is. Now it takes up two thirds of the screen if I hold it like this. I swatched, believe it or not, I did swatch. I did not block my swatch, but I swatched. And so I feel like this has less to do, and here, okay, there. Now this isn't a situation where like this would not fit. It would be like a, a, sh a joke to wear it. Not anything like that. It is just, you can see where the neckline goes. Of course, I haven't added the collar to it yet, but even if I did add the ribbed collar, it's not gonna bring it in enough to make it feel like what I want. It almost looks like it's one of those like 80s off the shoulder sweater type situations. So it's too wide, just very much too wide. So my waist is he here. That's my waist. And of course it's supposed to have ease, but I mean, come on, like that's crazy. I love it. I love the yarn. This is fiber for the people in the hemp merino sport base. It's an organic merino and hemp fiber yarn. The colorways are beautiful. Um, this is the Mojave collection of signature solids. Again, I talk all about this on the previous episode. So it's not that. It is just simply that what happened, I'm gonna set this back over here and I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on why this happened. Okay, I have a problem with, I do, first of all, I do not like tight fitting sweaters. Um, if it's a, like, I see a lot of adorable people wearing really adorable sweaters that are very close to the skin. And I don't think that, I don't mean close to the skin in terms of like negative ease. They look like they have some ease, but still, um, they're just very close fitting in my opinion. I want my sweaters to be open, slouchy, cozy, and comfy. We don't have the kind of weather here in this climate to throw on a sweater like you would throw on a long sleeve t-shirt. Like if I'm gonna put a sweater on, it's because it's cold and it's serving the purpose of what like a coat would be otherwise. We don't wear a lot of coats here. We wear a lot of like sweaters because they're easy to just throw on and then you don't need all these big bulky coats, if that makes any sense. So I don't like sweaters to fit me really close. Um, so I have this tendency when I read a pattern and I see the amount of ease that they build into the design and then I choose my size, I feel like I choose a size larger than I should be choosing because I'm worried about it being too tight around my arms or I think that I couldn't possibly be the same size as that model who's wearing it, even though maybe I am. Like, I don't know what it is about my perception of how things fit me and maybe my own body. Um, but I, I think my, my perception is that I'm always larger than what the person is that is wearing what would otherwise be my size. I don't know if that makes any sense. It sounds absolutely convoluted coming out of my mouth. But I think I have that problem. So I tend to knit things on the large side. So if you watched my episode where I shared my Felix, my most recent Felix um, pullover, I think we were all kind of going through that thought process like, hmm, maybe it's like too big, but it actually works out because it's really airy and boxy. So it was fine. But I think that was a similar situation is it was just, it was probably a little too big, but it worked out. That sweater I wear it all the time. The one sweater where I, I, swatched and I blocked my swatch and I knit the size that gave me where the the ease it needed and that sweater fits me exactly how it's supposed to fit me is my tulip jumper which I also shared in recent episodes of the podcast and you can see that over on Instagram that sweater is perfect it fits me just the way it needs to fit me it's I would not say that that sweater is too big by any means but again, I blocked it, the, I blocked the swatch, I swatched the way I, I was supposed to swatch, I did everything the way I was supposed to, and then I also just stuck to the size that I knew would work for me without that weird kind of like, maybe I should size up, I just, I just stuck to the right size. So anyway, that's my long, you know, me belaboring this whole issue of why this sweater or that sweater doesn't fit me, but it's gonna be ripped out. Now we can all go ahead and laugh together because I have decided that the sweater I am going to knit with all of those little balls of yarn that I pull from that sweater when I rip it out because it's striped. I've decided that I'm just gonna go ahead and knit the striped sweater by Andrea Mowry. Yeah, let's do it. Let's hear it. We'll, we'll all laugh together. Because again, if you've watched maybe three episodes ago, I went on and on and on about why I was choosing not to knit that sweater. And the more I look at the design, um, the more I watch these adorable, I knit if I want to podcasts that Andrea Mowry is putting out. And 
I, I knew she was a darling lady prior because I've heard her interviewed before, but I don't know. I've been watching all of those episodes, learning a lot about her and just kind of appreciating the work that she does even more than I already did. And I feel like I just, I, I want to knit that sweater now. Is that crazy? But that's probably what I'm going to end up doing with all of that yarn that I pull from that sweater. So keep posted. My next um, voiceover vlog is most likely going to include me ripping back that sweater and figuring out how I'm going to store all of these balls of yarn and then how I'm going to work from those. But that's the news on my Chloe sweater. Keeping you updated on that. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts down below on anything that I mention here. Um, but yeah. That's my update, but let's go ahead and move on to the things that are actively on my needles. Okay, first things first, this is a new work in progress that I started on our road trip to um, Santa Fe. So we took a trip to Santa Fe, New Mexico over the summer, and I had, I've had i never driven in a car east of Arizona, so it was my first time seeing that landscape, and it was amazing. And so I picked a pattern some, or something easy that I could work on in the car that was literally um, like mindless, but literally mindless. It was just, it was something easy that I didn't have to worry too much about that would just be soothing and calming while we rode in the car. And the yarn that I am knitting this with is fiber for the people. It's a new colorway that I have not featured in the, well, no, I featured it in the shop once and there's a whole story about that, but this version of the colorway, the proper version of the colorway has yet to be released into the shop. The Previous version was kind of a one-off um, version. This particular version was still in the works and is going to be released into the shop. Um, probably by the time that you're seeing this, I will have this available for sweater quantity ordering. Um, this is called Night Swim. Here is a skein of the colorway. This is the Merino single base. I'm actually knitting on um, the Merino Alpaca two-ply worsted base. And I'll show you that here. So here is the cake of the yarn that I'm knitting on. It's really beautiful. And then here is the blanket. This is coming out on these lights. It's coming out much more red. Well, no, I guess that's, it looks like it's much warmer in the lights than it actually is. I'll hold this up so you can kind of see. It's really beautiful. I... I would definitely recommend heading over. I, I share this project on the Fiber for the People Instagram account. Um, I'm going to create a project page for this on Ravelry very soon. But it's really beautiful. So this is the On the Porch. Yeah, the On the Porch Blanket by 5410 Studio. Um, I really hope that I can't, it's hard for me to tell looking at my little screen up there, if you're able to pick up all the beautiful blues that are in this, but there's these gorgeous blues that pop out in this colorway in addition to those russet colors. And then there's some yellow and some pale pinks in there in certain places, kind of like salmon colors. Okay, so 5410 Studio has an amazing collection of blankets, of hand-knit blankets, and they're all very... Um, I don't want to say simple, but minimal. I guess it's like a, they're very minimalistic style. Uh, lots of garter borders with um, ribbing in between. And this is hard to see. I'm realizing this is just, I feel like I'm, it's not as hard to see for you as I'm thinking it is. But there are these beautiful garter ridges running vertically along all of this stockinette stitch. And then you have these real thick, garter stitch borders. I'm going to put a picture of the design up on the screen because obviously the variegated nature of this yarn makes it a little bit difficult to see that texture, but I don't mind that. Typically that would bug me, but I knew that this texture was so simple, minimal, will if you will, that it didn't bug me that you were going to kind of lose it a little bit in the variegation of the yarn. Plus the yarn is just so beautiful. Yeah, I'm really loving it. And I felt like it captured that Southwest vibe that I was feeling on our road trip to Santa Fe. And it's, it's really nice. Now, one of the things that I really like about this, considering it is I'm going to be a blanket, 
it's not all merino. There's alpaca going on in here too. So it's 80% superwash merino, 20% baby alpaca. So that alpaca gives it a really nice softness. So it's cozy for a blanket. And then it also has a really nice drape and kind of lays nicely over your lap. Um, as I'm knitting it, it kind of serves like as a nice little blanket on my lap which I clearly don't need today, um, but it is very, very nice. And then the construction of the yarn is a two-ply construction. Let's see if I can hold, actually, okay, here's one of the little balls of yarn that I have left, and you might be able to see the two plies in there. It's really beautiful. Can you see that blue? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. So that is my On the Porch Blanket by 5410 Studio, knit using the Night Swim colorway. Again, Night Swim on Merino Single. There's that blue, look at that, the screen. You're probably like, yeah, Taylor, we see the blue. We get that there's blue in there. Just gotta make sure you see the blue. It's beautiful, so beautiful. Okay, Night Swim, new colorway, is going to be available in the shop for sweater quantity ordering probably by the time that you see this episode of the podcast. And then I will be doing another full update with the colorway Night Swim, most likely the first week of October. Okay, let's move on to what I have next. Okay, so the next project that I have is one that's been on the needles for a very long time. I mean, we're talking pre-pandemic. Uh, I think I started this maybe six months prior to COVID even becoming a thing. And it's been on the needles that long. And I don't even really have a justification for why it's taking me this long to get it finished. So I won't even try to, but I love, I love this. And so it surprises me that I haven't just gotten it finished because not only is it just beautiful to look at, the design is something I really want to have to wear during the colder months ahead. And I missed out on an entire season to wear this because of my, you know, inability to get it finished. So this is my no frills sweater by Petite Knit. It's very dark. Um, it's kind of hard to see the detail even in this lighting that I have going on right now. It's just a dark color, but it's beautiful. So I'm gonna hold it up so you can kind of see what I've got so far. And that's that, the no frills, beautiful. Again, I'm knitting this in a size that's a little bit roomy, but I know I swatched for this one well, and so I feel very confident in this, and I'm trying it on as I go, so it's just really going to knit up perfectly for me, um, and I love it. So I, I'm excited to finally be buckling down and getting it finished. Okay, so let's talk quickly about the yarn that I'm using. Some of you are probably already familiar with what's going on here, but this is Fiber for the People yarn. Now, I have an entire video devoted to what's going on here, and I will link to that um, on the screen for you to see. But this is a combination of a variegated mohair in the Angel Rust colorway and a solid base yarn. So this is the base yarn, um, or excuse me, this is the colorway Sapphire, and then the mohair is Angel Rust. I'll show you what those two look like individually. Okay. Angel Rust is the mohair that I'm using. It's a beautiful variegated color with teals and blues and oranges and yellows. It's supposed to sim uh, be similar to like a rusted metal. It's really beautiful. And then the solid that I'm using is Sapphire Fiber for the People yarn. This is the Merino Nylon Two Ply Kid Mohair Silk. And those two together, when you pair them, create this really gorgeous, almost variegated looking yarn with a lovely halo. You can see how the yarn has kind of uh, faded, not fa there's, it's creating like a faded effect. There's a little bit more of a red going on down here and then it fades up to more teal here, or I should say it faded down this direction as I'm knitting this top down. It's really cool. And then the sleeves are kind of sticking to that same uh, look. So it's, it's really beautiful. I'm loving the way this is coming out. The design is just this. I mean, other than the fact that it's not finished, it looks like a crew neck sweater that you would purchase right off the shelf from like a, you know, a shop. And I love that about it. So I'm really excited to have this off the needles ready for the fall in the winter when it starts really getting cold. I will have this finished by the next time I see you guys. I know that. Um, this sleeve would have been finished by now other than me finding a drop stitch. Like here's all of my, my decreases are happening right here. 
Now my drop stitch was like right off the side of one of my decreases and I didn't know how. So if you have a drop stitch like in the middle of stockinette with no shaping going on, you can just ladder down to that stitch, pick it up and ladder back up and it's fine. But I didn't know where to ladder down because it was happening right along my sleeve decreases and it was frustrating me because I couldn't just easily see which one of these stitches to ladder down with and so I didn't know how to fix the problem like that so I just had to throw in a lifeline and rip back so I had had it all the way to the cuff I was already starting the ribbing of the cuff and then I had to go back like six decreases um, to fix my drop stitch otherwise this would be finished so that was mighty frustrating but we, we we move on so yeah loving this excited to have it off the needles I will not start anything new a sweater wise until this is finished. That is the commitment I am making to myself. And let me tell you, it has been hard. Once I knew my Chloe sweater was coming off of the needles and that I was ripping it back, it's like, um, it almost like opens up your knitting calendar and you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna be ripping this back. Okay, so now let's think of something new. And that is a very irresponsible way to go about your projects, in my opinion. I apologize if that's how a lot of you decide you like to work through your projects. But for me, it is very irresponsible of me to just say, oh, that's coming off the needles. Let's go find something new. But I'm telling myself that this needs to be finished before I even, you know, go into that, before I even decide what I'm gonna work on next. And I believe that I am just going to commit to doing the Stripes sweater by Andrea Mowry with the yarn from my Chloe sweater that I will be ripping out after this is finished. Um, there's a lot of projects out there right now that I would, I really, really want to knit. A lot of yarn that I really want to knit with that I have been dying and packaging for sweater quantities. You guys, when you place your signature solid orders and your sweater quantity orders, I can't even tell you what that does to me. There was one that left the other day. It was my colorway yucca, a sweater's worth of it. And I, I was just so drawn to it and I wanted to work with it so badly, but I knew I had to take care of all of this. So I, I, it's a constant, not a constant struggle, but it is definitely something that I have to exercise my willpower with, but otherwise I'd be casting things on left and right. And I have done that in the past, but not now I've got to finish this stuff. And then I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with that over there. Because you know, that's just, it's just what you got to do to stay focused. I was, what was I watching? I was watching something and somebody was talking about how we get into these blocks where you don't know what to work on. You don't, you don't have, you don't feel inspired to work on what you already have. And so you don't know what to do otherwise. And that the reason that that happens, or one of the main reasons that that happens is that you have too many ideas, too many things that you want to do, or you, you have too many things started. And my goodness, if that is not just the truest thing when it comes to knitting and being uh, not being a monogamous knitter. Sometimes you've got all of these things casted on and it will block you from wanting to work on any of them. And I would love to hear what you guys have to say about that because I think it is so true. Anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. That's my direction right now. Next time I see you guys on the next episode of the podcast, that sweater will be finished and we'll be figuring out what we're going to be doing with that stripes pullover. But in the meantime, I do have some things that are unrelated to knitting that I definitely want to share with you guys. Okay, so I have a few things to share with you here. Um, the first one, now I am a very sensitive person in terms of um, my my sensory system and my environment. That's, what I'm saying sounds, light, um, these kinds of things. I'm very sensitive to them. Smells, especially after having children. There's something about sudden noises that I, I'm always, it always catches me off guard. I always kind of like, um, jerk or you get that kind of like that adrenaline surge whenever you hear like something really loud all of a sudden or, um, sleeping at night, any kind of light in the room. I'm very sensitive to that. And it's, it could, cause me not to sleep as well, all these things, whatever. So I discovered, actually I discovered about a year and a half ago, this company named uh, called Lunia and they 
they make a lot of like loungewear, sleepwear, stuff like that. But I was scrolling on Instagram and I saw the eye masks that they sell. And I was very enticed by the advertisement. And so I went on their shop site and I purchased one of their eye masks. And I wanted to share that with you guys because I feel like these types of products, um, it's kind of nice to know how they really work, you know, if somebody really likes them. So this is my mask from this company, Lunia. So you can see their logo right there on the side. It's in this beautiful kind of rose gold color and it is silk and it is so soft like you can see oh just how squishy and soft it is and it has this really nice wide band that goes all the way around your head so I'm gonna we're doing this because um I'm just gonna leave these on I just want to show you like how my husband teases me at night because of the way this looks but I'm gonna show you what this looks like when it goes on so it goes over your head like this <laughs> hi and you pull it down over your eyes like that. And it's super comfortable. Let's go ahead and adjust this weird humidity hair that I have. And I love it. It's great. It stays in place. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. I sleep on my back. And this thing stays put. And I don't, I think this goes without saying I'm not sponsored by these people. They don't even know that I'm talking to you. Literally, I just love this. And I wanted to share it with you guys. So it is, the company is Lunia. I'll link to it down below. I don't get any kickback if you click on the link. I just really like it. So I wanted to share that because I know some of us are, you know, sensitive sleepers and I'm one of those people. It comes in a cute little silk bag when you get it too. So, okay, first thing I wanted to share. I love my Lunia eye mask for sleeping. Okay, the next thing, in the time that I have been away from the screen, if you will, I have been doing a lot of reading. Um, I love reading, but I don't do it as much as I would like to. I um, particularly love fiction and I even more particularly love like mysteries. Um, I, I like things that really capture my imagination. They're not over the top. I don't like things that are really, I don't like sad stories. I know Jodi Picoult is a big favorite of a lot of people, but I will not read her books because I just can't do with that kind of like, uh, whatever that is. I don't even know what you, what you would want, the overly emotional like plot lines and whatever. But I really love thrillers and mysteries and I love it when they take place during, you know, historical periods. Okay, so that being said, I have done a lot of reading since we last spoke. Um, and this is what I've, this is the reading I've done. Okay, so these are all the books that I've read since our last episode, well, since June. I've read all of these since June and I am just so deep down this rabbit hole of, of Elizabethan thrillers, I guess you could say. So all of these are, this is an Elizabethan thriller and these are Tudor thrillers. These take place during King Henry VIII and this takes place during Queen Elizabeth I. Okay, this is the final book in a, no, sorry. This is the most recent book in a series of books that follow um, Giordano Bruno, who is a, a real, was a real person. He was a philosopher. He was, um, he was considered a heretic at the time. He had left the Catholic Church because he was exploring lots of other philosophies. And there's a whole story about that. And you actually learn a lot about him and his history through this series of books. This is by S.J. Paris. Um, her actual, this is her pseudonym or her pen name. Um, she is Stephanie Merritt, I believe. Yeah, Stephanie Merritt. But anyway, she writes these books that follow Giordano Bruno and he serves as your, um, so he's your main character, but he's the kind of the detective in the story. He's not a detective, but he kind of serves that purpose in these stories and they are, kind of like murder mysteries during the Elizabethan time, but they also are just so steeped in historical fact, um, which meets that fiction that you feel like you're learning so much from the stories. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not very good at reviewing books, <laughs> but that's what's going on in these books. So this is the most recent one. They are rather graphic. There's a lot of graphic depictions of, um, Tra uh, traitors being executed so that if you're sensitive to that kind of thing which strangely like I am sensitive and when you're reading about it I mean it's not like you can close your eyes <laughs> like you 
kind of have to just get through it. But the stories completely make up for that. And those parts are very far and few between, but they are there. But I love these. So this is, like I said, a series of books. I believe this is the seventh book in the one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth book in um, the series. And I have read all of the other books. I have all of them on my bookshelf in there. So this is excellent. If you like historical fiction, if you like murder mysteries or thrillers, and you particularly like the time period of Elizabeth I, I can't tell. I can't, I can't recommend it enough. I really can't. So um, SJ Paris, all of this is linked down below. And I will link to my Goodreads account. Let's be friends on Goodreads. I'm really getting into using it a lot more. I don't write a lot of reviews, but I just keep my books that I'm reading. Okay, so the next books that I've been reading, after that one, um, I started digging around at other similar styles and I discovered CJ Sansom. He's been around for a while. I mean, this book was written, let's see. When was this written? 2003. Okay, so these books follow, the main character is a lawyer during King Henry VIII's, towards the end of his reign. So we're talking 1540s. And this, okay, so this one starts in 1537. So he is a hunchback and a lawyer and he gets himself kind of tied up in political intrigue in these books. And this is taking place during the dissolution of the monasteries. So this is when the Reformation was really getting ramped up in England. The monasteries were being dissolved. And this is this first book in his series is very early on in that, you know, that period. This book is fantastic, but I will tell you that once you get through this book, all of the books after that that follow Matthew Shardlake, who's the main character, they just get better and better and better and just the stakes get higher, the pace because it's not it doesn't become more fast-paced. The the plot is is thick and rich and you feel like you're getting all of the backstory you need without getting more than you need. I don't know. I and I love the character development. It's holy moly the character development that happens in the course of this novel and then this novel to the next one. It's fantastic. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I have been diving down uh, you know the historical thriller Tudor Elizabethan period that rabbit hole for a while, but I really dove deep down that rabbit hole over the summer and just devoured some books in a short amount of time. So I cannot recommend these enough. I feel like reading is one of those things that if you aren't doing it, you should make time for it because the, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, it's so great for your I guess you could call it your mental health, your sense of calm. There's something about learning through your reading that is fulfilling. And especially when it's entertaining at the same time, I highly recommend picking up some good books. If you do have the time and you feel like it's something that you've been wanting to do and having good reads there to kind of, to track your progress and to see what other people are reading. Um, I think it's, it just, I don't know. It makes it, it makes it interesting. It keeps it interesting even outside of the, interesting nature of your books. So just thought I would share that with you guys a little bit different than the usual content I share at the end of the show, but some recommendations to you. Let me know what kinds of stuff you like to read. Are you also into these kinds of books? What's your gig? And then get in touch with me on Goodreads. Find my Goodreads account. I'll link to it down below. And then also, if you are a sensitive sleeper, check out that eye mask. I cannot recommend it enough. All right, you guys, that is all I have time for today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend it here with me in my little corner of YouTube. It means so much to me. Um, really quick note before I say goodbye, you may have noticed the name of this channel has changed to Taylor Seeking Cozy. And that is simply because I wanted the YouTube channel to be its own thing, it, separate from Fiber for the People, though it is still very much a part of that because that is me. Fiber for the People is my business and I will you know, that will always be a part of my YouTube channel, but I wanted it to be its own thing. It's its own entity outside of that. And so I gave it a clever new name, Taylor Seeking Cozy, and that's pretty much it. So it is the same content coming your way, just with a different channel name. But anyway, in the meantime, thank you so much until episode 52 of the podcast, which I hope to have uploaded in two weeks. Happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Stay safe, stay well, and I will see you soon. Bye.